Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Plan Soup. My name is Nissa and today we are building for the platypus here in our King Island Zoo. So, if you want to learn a little bit about the platypus or just simply see how I built this habitat, then please keep watching. Okay, as you can see here, we already have built part of the pathing system in the area and uh, a temporary wall here. I did that when I built my little blue penguin habitat. Uh, and it was just to kind of get most of this uh, terrain done at once because it can be really really difficult especially when you build around water in the game to make all of that fit so it's the only way i actually could go in and make that happen just as once and then now i just clean it up a little and of course change this into glass we are gonna go with one way glass so we do not stress out our platypuses since they are somewhat um what's it called uh salt uh not salt uh, shy creatures so therefore we don't want to stress them too much this habitat will be a little oversized for our three platypuses but there is a reason behind one be or a few reasons actually one reason being that it, we will have guests going on three sides on this habitat so pretty much no matter where they are they can be watched and they can be disturbed so at least have a little syndrome that is at least somewhat away from guests on all angles uh, we also have the thing again with a split up habitat because though platypuses can live in the same area they are actually so solitary that they will literally feed at different times during the day uh, so they will live in the same area but when the other uh, platypus is up and around then uh, they will not go outside at all and just stay in their dens until the uh, water area where they eat and do their thing or uh, until that is available they will not share pool time or anything like that they want to have it for themselves and that is something that i thought at least should be able to be possible here um we have three individual uh, burrows and we also have the little house though the house is more so for the keepers so they can get in there and even have the possibility of locking a platypus in if you need for instance if one got hurt you don't want them to go in their dens and just hide down there so you can kind of keep them in there and safe if you need to uh, we also make a upsplittable habitat and it will not be one to one it will be pretty much like a third of the habitat is split up for the rest and it could be so the male can be put away from the females if needed but it can just as well be that you can split off the group in other ways for instance if one of the females becomes a little aggravated or get hurt or anything then you can take them out of the group and isolate them that way i think especially when we talk about these more shy animals or more solitary animals uh, i think that's something that you at least should try to work around and make uh, work for you too. And again, I think there's many different ways that you can make these changes that won't affect the guest experience at all. Um, and this will also make it possible that they will actually be able to swim in the same pool of water, but be in different enclosures at the same time. Uh, of course, for the benefit of this build, I do have the a gate open between we will have a underwater gate and a overwater gate uh, that can be used both and uh, they will both be open so for the benefits of this video you will see the animals uh, both swim and walk backwards and forwards but if needed the keepers would always be able to split them up as you can see here we are already again working with these lighter wood colors and the darker stones i will actually combine them with some lighter uh, tempered stones later on in today's video but for the wood i really like to have kind of signature wood grain 
for the shoes. It won't always be the exact same color or anything like that, but it's more the idea of this shoe. We want extremely much the light. Again, we're talking this uh, island in the middle of the ocean. We are uh, south of mainland Australia. We are north of uh, mainland Tasmania. And we are just in this beautiful sandy beach areas with a few tropical trees combined with a, a more temperate climate zone. And it's just, we want it all to work together. And therefore I thought really light wood would work perfect for this zoo. So I'm gonna stay with that through most of my builds for this zoo. Uh, if you see some of my other zoos, I have worked a lot with more red, um, Wood, which I think is really great for a kind of jungle aesthetic and more grey wood that will work perfectly for a more taiga, cold or um, mountainous uh, feel to it. I, I think it's really important when you build a zoo not to make every habitat the same but kind of have the same feeling through the zoo. Uh, and especially if you cater to people that come from outside, it won't matter that much for people who live nearby. But when you travel across the world and go to a zoo, you kind of want to know this zoo, um, like what this zoo look like. So when you go home and look at the pictures afterwards, you will be able without issues to just say, oh, it's this zoo because it looks like this. Uh, especially if you visit a lot of zoos worldwide, it's really important that you again can just l take a quick look at a habitat and know, oh, it's this zoo because this zoo has this uh, theme to their builds. I personally like to focus on the wood for this task because it gives the feeling that it could be locally sourced that way. However, you can also do it with other things, for instance, have very plasticky habitats, very thematic habitats, for instance, have a parrot uh, habitat and a um, viking habitat and like really like theme park habitats, uh, all of, uh, which I'm not a fan of personally, but it does really put your shoe in front and center uh, compared to a lot of other things going on. This roof, however, was a pain in the buttocks uh, because I wanted I I love these roof builds or uh, roof pieces I think they're beautiful I just have no idea what I'm doing with them um, so I don't think I offend anyone with my build but it's probably not how it's supposed to look um, but they really they they're a pain in the butt to build with but in a fun way. So uh, yeah, I worked a little around with them and I think I managed to get something good out of them at least. I, I think it looks good, but uh, yeah, it you are allowed to have different opinions, of course. I decided rather early on when I started thinking about this suit that I want most animals not necessarily to be local animals, but I want them to have some way of um, making sense of being here i think that's the best way to put it uh, so either they would be local or they would be fairly easy to get here either be not local but local adjacent so they wouldn't have to sh be shipped across the world or they would simply just have to be uh, a size and have living conditions that would be easy to manage for a longer transport. For instance, if you have a habit, a, a animal like some kind of lizard that would easily die if the humidity is not correct, then you wouldn't want to ship that across the world. I do know that most zoos nowadays get their animals from other zoos and not from the wild. However, there is a tendency still today that a lot of zoos have a few animals from different parts of the world but most of the animals will actually still be fairly local uh, for instance i live in denmark we do not have a lot of danish animals in danish zoos but then we have a lot of norwegian swedish british uh, north european animals that would be 
fairly local without being completely local. Then we combine that with uh, having some African animals and some Asian animals, which would be rather easy to get by uh, with local uh, forms of transport, sorry, modern forms of transport. And then in later years, we have started to get more and more North and South American animals into more Danish zoos. But again, it is just more expensive to get animals when you have to ship them across the world. And once again, King Island is a very small island placed between Tasmania and mainland Australia. And therefore, every animal would either have to be flown in or sailed in uh, pretty much no matter where they come from. I don't think it would shock anyone that uh, platypuses is kind of their own thing. Uh, they have their same, their own genus and their own family. There's no one else uh, that close related to them. Uh, and just looking at them, it really makes sense since they do not look alike anyone. Uh, when we go out and look at the order, however, we are looking at the order of Monotremata, which is a order holding seven species. And it is, of course, the platypus. And then we have the Echidna. Um, I'm not, probably not pronouncing that right, but... Um, it's kind of this very small hedgehog with a really, really long, really thin snout. Um, they are very, very cute uh, creatures, small uh, insectivores, I believe they are. Um, there's also some extinct species in here, but that's pretty much the closest relation uh, we have to the platypus. I could try to describe the platypus for you, but honestly, there's two ways that could go. Either you already know how they look like and it, you don't need me to describe it, or you don't know what they look like and my explanation would simply just confuse you a hell of a lot. So probably if you don't know how these look, look it up because they look very, very unique. And it's kind of something I believe all people should kind of have a chance to see. The platypus is of course a Australian animal. I think it's pretty much the Australian animals kind of on the level with kangaroos when you think about Australia. They live in uh, the regions of uh, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania and Victoria. And yes, that does include the Tasmanian island of King Island. Um, and yes, and the reason why I actually built them here today is because I looked up, er, because that wasn't my plan at all, but I just looked up what were uh, which animals were negative to King Island. And I will say we are not going to build for a lot of King Island animals because most of them are either insects, um, snakes they have some beautiful snakes um uh, spiders <laughs> and then we have a few uh, bovines sheep uh, pigs and so on primarily for uh, livestock um so yeah we will not build for a lot of the uh, the king island native animals but we will probably build for quite a few tasmanian and australian ones when we look at uh, climate zones for them, we are looking at the temperate and the tropical. And for biomes, uh, we look at lakes, freshwater, riparians, uh, rivers and wetlands. However, what I think is kind of funny here is that they also live in salt water some places because otherwise, how would they get to these smaller islands? Um, however, I haven't found that written anywhere. It's just my uh, head cannon that I kind of is confused about. Uh, anyway, with these uh, volcanic rocks, uh, this was not an issue when I built uh, last, but suddenly some of the bigger volcanic rocks have gotten this weird uh, color. It actually looks kind of cool some places. But the way I have used them, it looks really, really weird. So I'm just 
try not to use them. You can see it on the uh, yeah on the other side here. Um, I'm trying not to use them today, and then hope it either get fixed or maybe it's my computer having an issue. Hopefully, something will be figured out at some point. The platypus is technically listed as both uh, nocturnal and crepuscular uh, and this is because most of the time you will see them spend all day within their burrow. Uh, however, when it's overcast, they will simply come out and it won't be an issue at all. So it does seem that they aren't necessarily sleeping all day, but just using their burrows to stay out of the sun. Personally, I always find it funny with animals choosing to stay out of the sun all day when them they self live places and are built for places with this much sun. Um, but it's something we have heard about many times before and pretty much all around the world animals that choose to live very warm places with a lot of sun but just don't like the sun. Based on the weather, a platypus will spend around 10 to 12 hours of the day uh, in the water foresting for food, eating and doing what they need down there. The rest of the day they will simply stay within the burrow and uh, this can be affected a lot, as I mentioned earlier, because if you share the same area with another platypus, and especially if you are male, then you will actually just uh, limit your time partially and move your time. So for instance, you would be more inclined to be out during the day if you need to, to find enough food, especially if you haven't, like if food is a little scarce and such, then you can be more affected to have to be out during the day. But uh, if they have their own area, then it will take 10 and 12 hours in the water when it is the uh, darkest and then be inside if they have the choice. And that again, in a zoo, you can affect this very much with simply only feeding them at day, which isn't natural for them. Um, but it again it can work for them because they have this special kind of system that is based on whatever is needed for them to have of a system i think at this point it is fairly common knowledge that platypuses are venomous and they have these spurs on the back part of the ankles uh, what I find kind of interesting though is both males and females are bo born with these spurs but only the males will actually have the venom in them. I won't go too much into the technical of what's within this uh, venom. However, a big part of it is actually built as a part of the uh, immune system for the platypus. But if you want to read more in detail what it is or just in general more about the platypus i will link uh, the in article i got my information from below so you, there's a lot of good stuff if you want that and um, i always link my stuff in the description box i just often forget to say it since the platypus have this uh, dog-like bee one may think that they would eat things like duckweed and other aquatic plants, but they are actually carnivores, uh, feeding uh, mainly of uh, annelid uh, worms, freshwater swims, insect larvae, uh, and freshwater yabby duck. I'm not sure what that is, um, which they either will find in the riverbank or simply just snatch while swimming. When it comes to breeding, the platypus actually have something quite unique, and that is the fact that reproduction is extremely important for most animals. That's the way we survive. From a bio biological standpoint, the only reason you are here is to basically be a husk for your DNA to pass your DNA along. Now, I say from a biological standpoint, I do believe we have other things to do here on the planet than getting 
uh, kits, making kits. Uh, I myself I don't have any and it's fine. I don't tell people that they have to get any. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying from a biological standpoint, that's the only reason we here. We are born so we can make sure the next generation are born so we don't die out as a species. Therefore, it's extremely weird that even though female platypuses are able to mate and reproduce at the age of two, it is actually fairly common that some of them wait until they are five, which means three years of uh, babies that they could have that they just don't get. Mating season for the platypus will be between June and October, which is uh, winter for Australia. So I just uh, want to clarify because a lot of us live a little further north and would mean think it's the middle of the summer, but it is technically winter in Australia. Because the pl platypus use so much time in the burrows, they have a burrow system. So it's not just one hole. They will sometimes have different kind of rooms down there. When the female are ready to give birth, she will seal herself in a single one of these rooms, lay her eggs, and it is completely sealed. She will block it out with the sand, dirt, whatever is available to make sure that the humidity in there will not be able to get out and actually build herself a incubating system for the eggs and herself where we, she will stay within uh, for quite some time so she will not get out and get food and she will neither like some animals do have a mate that comes and feed her she are basically starving herself to make sure that these babies will make it I honestly have no idea how you do this in captivity if you take the egg and incubate them or if you have them in a closed off area that can hold that humidity or you actually let them go out and dig a burrow and do it. I have no idea how you do it in captivity. So if any of you guys know, then please comment section below. I would love to know more about this. Most egg laying animals will actually lay on their eggs to keep them warm. Uh, however, she partially already did that with the incubation, but she will also keep them a little differently. And instead of sitting on them, they will stay kind of between their tail and their rump. So kind of that uh, upper part of the tail, tuck them in under that. It will take the eggs around 10 days to hatch. And I remind you once again, she have incubated herself before she laid the egg. So it's already at this point, maybe 12, 13 days before, uh, since the last time she has uh, eaten. When the egg have finally hatched, the babies are no b bigger than a bean and they will have to gain weight fast. Uh, they will start to nurse for about four to uh, five months, but will not leave the burrow, uh, the babies that is, before they have gained around 80% of their total adult body weight, which would be around the six months uh, age. Anyway, it seems like I ran out of time again, and I will just say I have multiple platypus habitat builds at this point. So if you want more information, you can either watch them too, or once again, I have information below if you want to read some, because they are fairly interesting animals. Anyway, guys, for now, enjoy the cinematics, and I will of course come back afterwards.
Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And as always guys, you know the drill. Like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. I really hope to see you again, either in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys!